face to face with Jimmy Durham. I feel fairly sure that I could address the entire world if only I had a place to stand, comma, the peripatetic American artist Jimmy Durham said in the 1980s. Now he has that place, the fifth floor of the Whitney Museum of American Art, where his magnetic traveling retrospective has arrived with a comet trail of controversy. The controversy, like many attached to art are these days, is about identity and ownership, who has the right to do and say what? Mr. Durham, 77, is widely perceived as a Native American artist, maybe the Native American artist. He has often spoken of himself as Cherokee, his work has made frequent references to indigenous culture. But when the retrospective, Jimmy Durham, at the center of the world comma moved from its originating institution, the Hammer Museum in Los Angeles, to the Walker Art Center in Minneapolis, several historians raised objections to his ethnic claims, asserting that there is no evidence that he is Indian at all. Accusations that he misrepresents himself have been voiced in the past, but were now amplified by social media. This give a sense that the show of some 120 works was ethically tainted and would, at best, limp into New York. Now that it s here, what do we get? A review of the recent dissension on the museum's website, and the exhilarating sight in the galleries of his singular, cantankerous container-resistant career. True, some fact-checking has happened en route. Where the Hammer catalog followed Mr. Durham's lead in giving his 1940 birthplace as Washington, Arkansas, the Whitney has changed it to Houston, Tex. And if the status of Mr. Durham's Native American DNA is left inconclusive, that is clearly the heritage with which he self-identified from an early point. This was, presumably, what prompted him to join the American Indian Movement as a full-time organizer in 1973, inspired by the group's 71-day occupation of Wounded Knee, South Dakota, on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, with members of the Oglala Lakota tribe. A year later, he became executive director of its International Indian Treaty Council, which campaigned for a United Nations recognition of native sovereignty. He left the job after five years, partly because of disagreements with the movement, but also to turn his energies to making art. Or, rather, back to making art. In the 1960s, he had been active as a poet and performer and gone to art school in Europe. By the early 1980s, he was living in New York City with his partner, the Brazilian artist and activist Maria Theresa Alves, and exhibiting in alternative spaces as multiculturalism was coalescing as a trend. Some of his sculptures from the era are in the Whitney show, and fascinating for the degree to which they are both Native American and not. Most are assembled from New York Street finds car parts, old clothes, animal carcasses, police barricades, wood from construction sites to which Mr. Durham added Indian touches, beading, seashell inlay and feathers. A car muffler ornamented with beads and stars cut from an American flag could be a ritual object or a weapon. A stuffed moose head, pulled from a dumpster, becomes with its skin painted blue with yellow dots, like a night sky the centerpiece for a scaffold-like altar. In this sculpture's rambling, paragraph-long title, the artist explains that he found the head near the Cathedral of St. John the Divine, which, he writes, calls itself the world's largest Gothic cathedral, but isn't he? It's a modern American fantasy of such a cathedral, and, architecturally, a fake. Ethnically speaking, Moosehead Altar is a fake too. Or is it? By accepting fake as new and different real, which is something that art does all the time, Mr. Durham gives his sculpture and the cathedral its own weird and authentic power. Nor does he ever propose that Native American identity, at least his, is ever anything more than an artful construction. The point is instantly, and hilariously, made in his 1986 self-portrait dot hanging from the wall, it s a full-length nude figure cut from canvas, Miss Alves traced the outline from Mr. Durham's body, and fitted with a braid of synthetic hair, a mask-like face, wood-carved genitals, and a chicken feather heart. Handwritten words mark the figure's brick pink skin-like tattoos. Some are first-person confidences, hello. I am Jimmy Durham. As an artist I am confused about many things, I have 12 hobbies. 11 how sea plants exclamation mark. Others are like a clinician's notes. Mr. 
Durham has stated that he believes he has an addiction to alcohol, nicotine, and caffeine. Indian penises are unusually large and colorful. The piece is one of the great sculptural selfies of the late 20th century. It has both a record and an invention, a compound of false history and genuine cultural cliché. When Mr. Durham does dramatize specific indigenous history, the results can be stirring.